I'm just really going to ask you a question or two. You know, you're the first speaker ever, and I'm old. You know, we, we figured out I'm five or six years older than he is in Earth, but it's true. <laughs> you're the first speaker ever who actually answered the questions I was going to ask. <laughs> so I appreciate that. That was fantastic. But we, as a community, we've had a difficult uh, year and a half. And uh, who knows how long it's going to go on. You've faced so many circumstances, problems, situations all around the world. I wonder if you could share with us your thoughts about how we as a community and each and every one of us as individuals can help to move the ball forward, help to make progress to heal the wounds that were open during 2017, but to go beyond that and to make this a better community? Well, um, quite frankly, you're already doing it <laughs> as a community. And you, you first, first you have to believe that. I mean, um, can you imagine? I was 10 years old when my father was gunned down as a kid. I was 11 years old when my uncle mysteriously drowned. I was 12 years old. I was, excuse me, uh, 15 years old when my grandmother was killed in the church while playing the Lord's Prayer. My father was killed by a white man. My grandmother was killed by a black man. It would have been easy to embrace hatred. In fact, I could have hated all of y'all. <laughs> but I'm thankful for what the spirit of love taught, which teaches you to dislike the evil act but still love the individual. And quite frankly, that's the spirit of Susan Bro. That's the spirit of this community. That's who you are. That's the best of who we are. So... Which you've got to keep doing what you're doing, but we've got to get beyond the choir. We're the choir. And we've got to get out into the trenches. Now, I've read about some young men, or one or two, who used to be, who were members of this, this old, the organization that came here. And now, they've done a 180 degree turn. I heard one of the guys who was leading the effort, was a member of an African American church. So, when you... Masses of people maybe don't know this, but some, there's something about love. I think this man talked about how he was so gung-ho about being here, and then he started reflecting. He met a, a Muslim woman, and then he ended up meeting a girlfriend who I think was here. But my point is, here's a guy who has espoused hate for a number of years, and now he's changed his life. Now that's one. But there are hundreds who could do that. And all, somehow we got to find out how you, how, and this is going to be an oxymoron, right? but you have to find a way to love the hell out of people. <laughs> I mean, that's what my grandfather used to tell me. The burden of hatred is too great a burden to bear. I love everybody. The man that killed my lovely wife and the, even the man who killed my son, I refuse to allow them to reduce me to hatred. I love everybody. I'm every man's brother. Now, that's a hard thing to create. But quite frankly, when you look at all the opportunity in this nation, that's what this nation is about. So we do have to have a leadership change. And I'll say this as I talk to you. Unfortunately, our commander in chief is a divider in chief. And even if you like him, you know, I, I had a meeting with him, and he was interesting. <laughs> This was before he was, the day before he was sworn in, and I was challenging him on the Social Security issue. And you know what they did? They said they were going to have us at, to the White House so we could talk about putting the ID on the Social Security card. They never invited us. And instead of, again, talking about voter suppression, he came up with, well, there's voter fraud. He created the voter fraud commission, if you remember, it's this, because it doesn't exist. It was all a facade. No, all I'm saying is we can't fight him at the level he's fighting at. But we can fight against injustice. We can fight against wrongness. And one of the ways we do that is on Tuesday, we begin by changing Congress. And, I, and so, although you're voting for Congress persons, but also around the country, 
you have friends that may not have voted. So use your social media sites to talk about the importance of Election Day Tuesday. I, I've already voted, Some many of you may have already voted as well. But the point is, we got to talk about this election. Because i tell you what, if I was here tonight talking, and I didn't have a shirt on, just my uh, there was a guy years ago called Butch Lewis who was a boxing promoter, and his the trademark was wearing no shirt, just his chest hair showing. <laughs> and if I was sitting up here with that, you all be looking at me saying, "Well, he sounds intelligent, but there's something wrong with him." And before I got out of Charlottesville, most of Virginia would know Martin Luther King's son showed up tonight, and something's wrong with that boy. He's not riding on foot <laughs> because of technology and gossip. Let's use that same mode of conversation to encourage people to vote on Tuesday. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, a lot of you who know me are not going to believe this. I actually know when to shut up. It doesn't get any better than that answer. And so all I want to say to you again is thank you for, for making the effort and making the trip just like your father did all those years ago. And I hope we treated you better than this community treated your father way back in 1963. Thank you so much.